Hello, my name is Olena Melnik. I'm a senior researcher at AH Zurich and associate professor at Suma National Agrarian University from Ukraine. So today I'm going to tell you about our project on uh, assessment uh, of damage at, uh, damages and ways to restore agricultural lands in Ukraine. It's, uh, this project is a collaborative effort of uh, Suma National Agrarian University and Rural Agricultural University from Great Britain. This partnership um, is ATH Zurich. And uh, this project uh, about um, soil restoration and how to assess damages. So as you know, one third territory of Ukraine uh, have been damaged by raw hostilities. And uh, this is the size of an average European country. And uh, Ukraine, I would say, currently experiences the uh, worst environmental disaster um, from the point of view uh, contamination per unit of time. And uh, toxic elements such as uh, lead, cadmium, uh, titanium, uh, cobalt, cuprum, this can leach from uh, ammunition and weapon, and they can contaminate our soils, and uh, thereby threatening global food security. And uh, if uh, contamination are not indicated and recorded in time, it can enter the food chain and uh, can become cancerogenic for human. Uh, I would like to add that before the war, Ukraine uh, supplied about 400 million people around the world with uh, food commodities. And uh, now spent ammunition and uh, chemicals can uh, contaminate soil for dozens of years ahead. Uh, actually, on, this, uh, on the base of these ideas, we um, created our project. Uh, so uh, for now, our project has... Uh, for different stages. The first stage is research. So we investigate the level of uh, pollution. We uh, train our uh, future experts. And we uh, the next step is uh, to map our country, especially polluted areas, and create networking. Uh, the first stage, specialists from rural agriculture university develop a protocol to assess soil damages and to uh, assess uh, how the raw hostilities influence uh, soil health. We tested together with uh, uh, staff from Ukrainian University, we tested this protocol in Salisbury Plain in Ukraine, uh, in England, sorry. And then we uh, made some amendments. And after a series of international workshops that were conducted both online and in Switzerland, uh, we uh, made some amendments, and we um, and our colleagues from UK from Ukraine they bring to Switzerland twenty soil samples from farm from five damaged farmlands, and um, we spread these soil samples among uh, our partners from England, from Switzerland, from Ukraine, and uh, we used um, cutting edge laboratory equipment to uh, assess contamination uh, contamination of the soil samples. And then we again made some amendments to our protocol. And after that, uh, my colleagues from Ukraine, they uh, conducted um, soil sampling in 20 warm farmlands, as you can see in north uh, and northeastern part of Ukraine. And uh, we took uh, 280 soil samples uh, to uh, understand the level of pollution. And to understand. And sometimes we found a very high level of pollution. It was 3.35 uh, times uh, higher than maximum allowed level for the territories. Uh, so here you can see my colleagues, they uh, conducted soil sampling. The territory is very close to Russia border. And you can see the uh, some of our craters, they were uh, across uh, 25 meters in diameter. So then we um, assessed, measured the soil samples uh, by using uh, different methodics uh, in uh, the same time in England, in Ukraine, and in Switzerland. And now uh, some of our soil samples have been processed uh, in Poland uh, to uh, estimate the net concentration of heavy metals and mobile forms that can be uh, absorbed by uh, plants and can enter the food chain.
And uh, but we understand that territory of Ukraine is huge, and we need a lot of efforts to um, understand the scale of the pollution. And then we decided to provide training for Ukrainians. Our main uh, target group was um, former soldiers and researchers from different research institutions around Ukraine. And we um, gathered together 26 people uh, who would like to contribute to a recovery of Ukrainian soil. And we provided comprehensive training for them. And we taught them so uh, how to take soil samples according to our protocol and uh, how to use remote sensing data, how to calibrate all this data. Uh, because for some territories, we cannot use the soil sample because we don't have an, uh, just access to the territories. So for the territories, especially in the north part of Ukraine, uh, we, uh, we could use drones to estimate the level of pollution. And uh, for uh, still occupied territories, we can use uh, satellite data to predict the level of contamination. So um, actually, uh, now our idea is to create a network and um, to map the territory of Ukraine. And uh, that uh, 26 experts that I've mentioned, now they have been collecting soil samples around the Ukraine. And then um, we expect to put all this data together with the data obtained by our Ukrainian staff uh, in the special dashboard developed by ARU, for, especially for our project, where we want to get together all the information about soil pollution from different farms, from different communities. And this dashboard can be used uh, both by our government, farmers, and um, uh, probably investors. And they can get access to um, each farm and to understand the level of pollution. And uh, we expect that uh, we can create a, a network of international experts who would get access to the dashboard and understand the situation uh, with this or that farm and can recommend what uh, remediation strategy can be applied for uh, this or that lens. And then uh, they can help to uh, farmers to, um, to remediate their lands. So we do understand that um, a lot have been done because the territory of Ukraine is huge, as I have said. But uh, the start has been done, and we expect that uh, we uh, will be able to create this network and leverage our efforts to help Ukraine to build back better and greener. Thank you for your attention.